James Webb Space Telescope discovers an early universe that no one can explain. Prepare for a thrilling journey into the cosmos as we unravel the perplexing enigma that's left astronomers speechless. The James Webb Space Telescope's discovery of an early universe so baffling it defies all explanation. Join us on this mind-bending adventure through the uncharted depths of space as we delve into the secrets that could forever alter our understanding of the universe. Don't miss out on this suspenseful exploration. Be sure you subscribe to Space Story to never miss a secret from Our Space Again. Okay, so now let's move on. The James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST, at NASA has unearthed previously unknown images that demonstrate that a well-known early galaxy has a companion galaxy that is obscured by its own light but is rich in star formation. The galaxy SPT041847, which is known as one of the brightest, dustiest star-forming galaxies in the early cosmos, was the first target for the JWST. Due to the fact that it is an extremely distant galaxy, it is approximately 12 billion light-years from Earth, the gravity of another galaxy in the foreground, located between SPT-041847 and the Space Telescope, causes the light from this galaxy to be bent and magnified, which results in the formation of a nearly perfect circle known as an Einstein ring. Astronomers were able to obtain a more distinct image of SPT-041847 with the help of the JWST and, at this time, they noticed a peculiar blob of light beaming toward the galaxy's periphery. According to a statement released by Cornell University, the blob in question actually represents a companion galaxy that had been obscured in the past by the light coming from the background galaxy. Bo Ping, the lead author of the study and a doctorate student in astronomy at Cornell, was quoted as saying in the release that we found this galaxy to be super chemically plentiful, something that none of them had anticipated. The JWST alters the way we look at this system and paves the way for new research avenues into how galaxies and stars formed in the early universe. According to the researchers, earlier observations of SPT-041847 made with the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array, or ALMA, in Chile had signs of the companion. However, at the time, these hints were considered as random noise. The researcher made the discovery with the help of the JWST that the companion galaxy, which is known as SPT-0418-SE, is approximately 16,000 light-years away from SPT-041847. In contrast, the Milky Way's companion dwarf galaxies, the Magellanic Clouds, are situated approximately 160,000 light-years away from our solar system. Due to the fact that SPT-041847 and SPT-0418-SE are so close to one another, it seems likely that they may eventually interact with one another or possibly merge into one another. Given that SPT-041847 is believed to have formed when the universe was only 1.4 billion years old, this galactic pair could, in turn, shed light on how early galaxies evolved into larger ones. Despite its young age, it is believed that the star system SPT-0418SE has already hosted multiple generations of stars. This is an interesting fact. Both of the galaxies have a mature metallicity, which is defined as a high concentration of elements heavier than hydrogen and helium, such as carbon, oxygen, and nitrogen. This level of metallicity is analogous to that of the Sun. However, the age of our Sun is estimated to be 4.5 billion years and, according to researchers, it inherited the majority of its metals from previous generations of stars that were 8 billion years old. We are seeing the remnants of at least a couple of generations of stars that have lived and died within the first billion years of the existence of the universe, which is not what we typically see, study co-author Amit Vishwas, a research associate at the Cornell Center for Astrophysics and Planetary Sciences, said in the same statement. We are seeing the leftovers of at least a couple of generations of stars having lived and died within the first billion years of the existence of the universe. To explain the measured abundance of nitrogen relative to oxygen, which is a reliable measure of how many generations of stars have lived and died, scientists believe that the process of forming stars in these galaxies must have been very efficient and must have begun very early in the history of the universe. 
This is particularly important to understand because this ratio is a reliable measure of how many generations of stars have in fact lived and died. Just using binoculars or a simple telescope, one can observe a wide variety of fascinating objects such as nebulae and comets from the surface of the Earth. Yet, if you want photographs of faraway galaxies that are suitable for scientific inquiry, you will run into a problem – air. It's possible that you believe air to be transparent, but that perception is only partly accurate. Light is a form of electromagnetic wave, and different wavelengths can be associated with it. People are only capable of seeing a limited spectrum of wavelengths, which spans from 380 nanometers to approximately 700. The longer ones are seen as red by our brains, whereas the shorter ones are interpreted as violet. Because the light of these wavelengths is able to travel through the atmosphere without suffering a significant dimming of its intensity, we can claim that the atmosphere is transparent to visible light. On the other hand, the air is not so transparent to other wavelengths of light that we are unable to perceive them with our eyes. In the infrared area of the electromagnetic spectrum, which refers to wavelengths that are longer than red, a significant portion of the light that is emitted can be absorbed by water vapor as well as carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Exactly the same thing happens with global warming. As visible light strikes the surface of the Earth, the temperature rises and the surface then radiates infrared. Carbon dioxide in the air can absorb some of this infrared, which contributes to an overall increase in the temperature of the atmosphere. This can result in unfavorable outcomes for human beings. The absorption of this light presents a unique challenge for an infrared telescope that is located on the ground. It would be like attempting to see the sky through a cloud cover. You simply wouldn't be able to. One solution to this issue is to simply position the telescope in an environment free of air, such as outer space. Of course, with each potential solution comes a new set of problems. In this particular scenario, you actually have to mount an extremely delicate scientific instrument on a rocket and fire it off into space, which is an extremely risky endeavor. The idea of looking back in time may strike some people as odd, but it is something that is routinely done in the field of space science. Our universe is constrained by the laws of physics, with the speed of light being one of the more well-known examples of these laws. When we refer to light, we are actually referring to all the wavelengths that can be found across the electromagnetic spectrum. These wavelengths travel at a speed of approximately 300,000 kilometers per second, which is an extremely fast speed. Because light travels at such a high speed, it gives the impression of being instantaneous in our day-to-day -day existence. Even at these dizzying velocities, it takes a significant amount of time to get anywhere in the cosmos. When you gaze at the moon, you are seeing it exactly as it was one minute and 33 hundredths of a second ago. Even though we only got a brief glimpse into the past, we still have to consider this to be the past. The same holds true for sunlight, with the exception that the photons, or particles of light, that are emitted from the surface of the sun take little more than eight minutes to finally arrive on Earth. Our galaxy, the Milky Way, is estimated to be more than 100,000 light years in diameter and the stunning infant stars that can be seen in the JWST image of the Carina Nebula are located 7,500 light years away. To put it another way, the depiction of this nebula comes from a period of time that is around 2,000 years before to the time when it is believed that the art of writing was first developed in ancient Mesopotamia. Light is a type of wave that moves at an extremely breakneck speed. It would take light less than a second to travel the distance that would be required to go more than seven times around the planet. While observing objects in space, we need to take into consideration the amount of time it takes for light to travel from the object to our eyes or the telescope. For instance, it takes the light from the relatively close by star system of Alpha Centauri 4.37 years to reach our planet. Hence, if you observe it in the sky, you're effectively looking back 4.37 years in time. In point of fact, everything that you observe occurred in the past. You look back in time around 1.3 seconds to see the moon. Mars is three minutes in the past when it is observed when it is closest to Earth. The JWST is supposed to have the capability of looking more than 13 billion years into the past, all the way back to the stage in the development of the universe when the first stars were being produced. When you stop and consider it, that is very remarkable. It's fortunate that the Hubble Space Telescope is located in low Earth orbit. This makes it easy for astronauts to do maintenance on it whenever it is required. However, the JWST will be located in the L2 Lagrange point, which is a significant distance away. But could you perhaps explain the concept of a Lagrange point? Imagine the Space Telescope Hubble traveling around the planet. 
A centripetal force, also known as a force that pulls an object toward the center of the circle, is required for any object that is going around in a circle. The tension in a string can be thought of as the force that pulls an object towards its center when it is suspended from a string and swung around someone's head. This centripetal force that Hubble experiences is the gravitational force that is the result of its interaction with the Earth. The strength of the gravitational force exerted on an item decreases as the object moves further away from the Earth. Hence, the magnitude of the centripetal force would diminish if the telescope were to move into a higher orbit, or one with a bigger circular radius. It would take longer for Hubble to complete an orbit if it were to maintain its current circular trajectory. If we were to describe it, we'd say that it had a reduced angular velocity. The James Webb Space Telescope orbits the Sun rather than the Earth, but the concept is the same. When the orbital distance increases, the amount of time required to complete one cycle also increases. What happens, though, if you want the JWST to be farther from the Sun but yet complete a solar orbit in the same amount of time as the Earth? The telescope would also need to maintain the same position in relation to the Earth so that it could be controlled with greater ease. You are going to need to employ a strategy in order to make this happen. This is accomplished by the use of a Lagrange point, which is a point in space at which the gravitational pull of both the Earth and the Sun points in the same direction. At this point, there are two gravitational forces pulling on an object which causes that thing to move around in a circle. As a result, it is able to achieve a greater angular velocity as it orbits the Sun. In addition to this, it maintains its steady position in relation to our globe. Thank you for joining us on this exhilarating journey through the cosmos. If you enjoyed exploring the unknown with us, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more mind-blowing discoveries. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you never miss an opportunity to unlock the mysteries of the universe. Until next time, keep your curiosity alive and continue to wonder at the marvels of space. Farewell, fellow stargazers.